In this unit, we're going to talk about post-production, or after you're done shooting, recording your video, what do you do next? Now, probably you have some experience with this. It's so common. People make some audio and video and do some editing these days. So that's probably one reason I don't need to tell you too much. You probably already know a lot. Another reason is every program, every software, every computer, every operating system is so different it would be hard for me to tell you one thing that is kind of a secret or the one special way. So rather than do that, I'm going to just drop some general ideas on you and you can consider them and maybe some guidelines to think about. So in this unit, that's what we're going to focus on. Just some quick ideas of post-production, just in case you didn't know some of these kind of rules of thumb or general ideas. So after the shoot is what I like to call that. Of course, the first thing you run into is the software you're going to use for editing it. This could be software for video editing. It could be software for audio editing, depending on what kind of recording you're doing. You could even do something as simple as recording your PowerPoint presentation with video, with audio, and then you need to edit that. It doesn't have to be video of a person inside a studio or on location. It could be anything. So the first question in that case we end up with is, what kind of software should I use? And here I would like to emphasize that you should only use software legally. If you're pirating Adobe Premiere or some other software, you're really not helping yourself because you cannot be pirating all the time the rest of your life. You're going to need to, at some point, if you go to work or you work for someone, do something legal. Plus, it causes a problem. What if you cut a video, you edit a video for your workplace, for your boss, and then it ends up that it was on an illegal copy of some software, and then your company gets sued over that? It's possible. You say, no, they can't find out. Yeah, there are ways to find out. So it's best to think about what are your options. You don't have to spend a lot of money. In fact, there's a whole area of options called open source free software that you can use for free. And it's not just demo software or free because someone stole it and put it on the internet for you. So this is called proprietary versus free. Proprietary is going to cost money. It has legal restrictions. You cannot use it for free. Free software is often also called open software meaning that it usually does not have a price associated with it and it can be used in different ways by anybody and people can even modify the software to make it different so it's open. And we're also going to look a little bit at hardware requirements. Hardware requirements would seem to be a big problem when I see my students trying to make video. They think, well, I'll just use my notebook, I'll just use this little tablet, but yeah, easy to say hard to do. So the first choice is your video editing software. Now, the big ones I like are in the free open source KDN Live. And then for the proprietary, I like Vegas. These are the different logos right here you can see. So KDN Live can run in Windows or in Linux, and Vegas can only run inside Windows. I think KDN Live can run on a Mac also. So it can run on a Mac, on Linux, and on a Windows machine. Whereas Vegas, I think, is only Windows. Okay, and Vegas is going to cost you money. It's cheaper, lower cost than some of the other professional software. For example, uh, Premiere. But it is good value for what you pay. So in other words, you pay a lower price, but you actually get a lot. I've been using Vegas since it came out when it belonged to another company, and then later Sony bought it, and now Magix, another company, has bought it. So it's been through a few companies, but I've been using it since about 1997, 96, I think, a very long time when they first started. Now, what other options are there? Well, there are a lot of options, and I can't go over them all. I would take all day long, and we could have big arguments. Everybody likes a different package. But all you need to do is check out the wiki. 
So just go to Wiki and look up video editing packages and there's a really good Wiki on that. Let's take a look at that Wiki now. So here in the Wiki we can see that there is a list of video editing software and they also have divisions based on free and open source and they have some software that's not being sold anymore but maybe you can still use. Long list, look at that. All those are video software packages. Here's free and open. These are open software packages that are actively being developed now. That means they're not gonna cost you anything. And some of these are really outstandingly good and used by many big companies such as Blender. Blender is a really big one. Uh, just straight out using FFmpeg is very popular and as I mentioned KDN Live. KDN Live is probably the best for getting that interface that you're familiar with. Some people like this Pitivi. I've heard people say it's good. I've not used it but some people say it's really good. OpenShot. I've heard a lot of people talk about OpenShot being quite good too. Okay, why do I show that to you? This means you don't need to steal software. You don't need to say, uh, oh, I have no other option. I need to get Premiere or I need to get something else. Or you don't need to just get a Mac so you can use iMovie. You know, why spend all that money on a Mac when you can use a, you can get an old used computer for your computer anyway. I'm not sure the Mac is going to really help your movie making that much. As we see later, if you're serious about making video, you need some serious hardware. Here at the hardware table now we're going to go ahead and take a look directly into using some video editing software. Now in this case we're going to use a Vegas Pro but you can use any software. I especially recommend something free and open like KDN Live especially if you're not going to be making a lot of videos but if you're in the, in the lab we use Vegas. The reason we use Vegas is because it's easy to do the jobs you need to do quickly. But before we begin that, let's first look at how to set up our project. And the most important part of the project is staying organized. And staying organized sounds so easy, but it's actually not. So what we have here is a project we had, and the project we call Boot Camp. And inside Boot Camp, that's the overall project, so we create a directory here. We had three separate groups making videos. One on a dual degree program, one on halogen lights, and one on LED lights. So let's look at one of these, the LED light project. As you go in, we create three folders. One is for raw video files, one is for editing files, and one is for render. So this is the way to stay organized, and I try to use the same naming system all the time. Of course, you can use different from me, but it would be best if you at least keep the same for yourself. Otherwise, things become chaotic, and later when you want to change or re-edit, it's a big problem. The raw folder is going to hold the recordings that come right out of your camera. Now, in our case, we record directly onto the hard disk. Maybe you record to a card, and you bring it back, and you copy here to this folder. And if we click one of these, we'll be able to see the video. This was our NG, so okay, we didn't like the result, or there was something wrong, or she was just testing. Okay, so there we go. Now, one thing they've done here is they've kept all these files from the names of the recording. That is, the camera has an automatic name, or the video recording system has an automatic name. And in that case, they've just kept the name. If it was me, I would change the names to be more meaningful, and then have something like take one, take two, take three. So you can be sure that what you're dealing with is what you want. So I don't like this too much. Let me take an example 
of another location here. Here's another directory where I'm working on a project. And in this project, we can see we have our project and then inside our project we're doing some editing. Now this editing is just inside the editing folder, but if we back up, we can see we have our raw footage folder. So let's take a look at that. Inside our raw footage, you can see I've given more meaningful names. So this is a class I was teaching, so I'm recording my lectures. Unit 1, Part 1. Unit 1, Part 2. Unit 1, Part 3. Unit 1, Part 4. That helps you keep things very clear. Much better approach. It's, it's a small thing, but it's a thing most people forget because they're used to just dragging files onto their desktop and not being organized. In video, it's very important to stay organized because it will get confusing very quickly. Now, as we back up a little bit, you can see I have different projects. But I also have a folder here called Trash. I'd like to create folders called Trash. And the reason I have a folder called Trash is, in this project, whenever I want to throw something away, rather than just deleting it, I put it into Trash first. So everything I don't want, I put into a Trash folder. Then, later, when the project is done, I can delete the Trash folder. Now you may say, hey, Professor Warden, I don't need to worry about that because in Windows or on the Mac, they have a trash can. And yes, that's true. But sometimes the video files are so huge that Windows or the Mac may not save your files in the trash folder, and they may delete them. So you need to make your own trash. So this is much safer this way, and you know where to find it in case it gets lost. You know, I mean, in case you need it back, it's not lost. You can get it back. Okay, so let's come back into here, and we have some other folders here we can look at again quickly. So, raw footage you always need, editing you always need, because editing is where we're going to place the files we use for editing, in our case the Vegas files, and here's a trash folder. You can see we put some files in there. We also have a render folder. The render is when we're finished, we're going to render, make our MP4s, the compressed videos that we're going to use or upload to YouTube, and you can see this is where we keep those. And again, we have a trash folder just to temporarily hold trash. So here is the classic way, editing, raw footage, and render. Here we also have another folder that we've added called graphics, and this is for B-roll or for uh, graphics such as PNGs or JPGs that we want to add to our video. So for example, I can look at one of these. I think this is all B-roll we're using. Right, so there's some B-roll. We can use this inside our video. So what we'd like to do is keep all of our B-roll or graphics right in the same project so that we can be sure where it is later. Or if we want to move the project, we just grab all of these, or we just move up one level, grab this folder, and then we can move this folder to another hard disk, or to an SD card, or over the internet, or over a local network, and we can just begin editing again. So, organization of your files is super important.